All right, so today we have an interesting topic to discuss. Uh, this is about the reverse tab nabbing. And uh, this is a vulnerability, uh, sort of like, you know, similar to uh, sort of like a phishing attack that the attacker could perform. So welcome back to Cybersecurity TV and let's dive into this one. Uh, first question is what's a reverse tab nabbing, right? So as you could see on the previous page, so we have multiple windows, like uh, there's a front window and then there's a back window. And uh, let's say, like, you know, you have two tabs open on the same browser. The other tab, the second tab, could have some impact on the first tab. And that that's what the reverse tabbing is, tab nabbing is about. So uh, the definition is reverse tab nabbing is an attack where a page link from the target page is able to rewrite that page. For example, to replace it with the phishing site. Don't worry about this. If you don't understand, we'll get down to the demo and I'll, I'll demonstrate you how this exactly happens and we'll also go through the code of the uh, demo that I have prepared. Uh, the, the primary uh, finding or uh, the scanner, how it detects, or if you are manually reviewing the site, how you should detect is if you see a target set to a blank, then that's where this vulnerability uh, is going to, is going to happen now let's uh, let let me uh, go to the virtual machine and then show you guys how this uh, attack actually works and then we'll deep dive into the mitigation and also what are the factors like you know how you can risk create this vulnerability during your penetration test so here is the um, uh, like you know let's say a victim.html. Let's let's assume this is the page uh, which you are testing, or this is the uh, application, let's say a banking application or something where has you have the login page and everything. Of course, I did not put that fancy UI in here uh, because this is just a demonstration. But I, what I want to demonstrate to you is uh, here. Let's say there is a link on your website. On, or any website that you want to visit has a, a link to another page. And what it does is when you click on it, it's going to open up a new tab. This is very normal behavior that you would see in the recent applications. When you click on it, it's going to open a new tab and, uh, like, you know, will redirect and open up whatever the page that it's linked to. In our example, it says, oh, why don't you go back to the previous tab? So our previous tab was the page where we came from. Now if you go back here, it says, oh my god, where did, you, where did your page go? Looks like you have been hacked. So we did not refresh this page, we did not do anything, but somehow our original tab from where we were working through got hacked. Now of course this is much easier to explain now that someone can perform the hacking or phishing attack by changing this page, like, you know, uh, by replacing this page with the fished site. So if I have my malicious server where I would host the same website, sort of like, you know, let's say, uh, gmail.com login page, of course, it's on the top, it wouldn't say gmail.com, but all of the UI would look exactly same, and when the user submits those credentials, will go to this uh, attacker's server rather than the Gmail server. And uh, there's no way uh, uh, some someone like you know user would be able to uh, detect it because it's impossible. Like there's no difference. The user has not refreshed. User hasn't done anything. It it just went to the other side. And that malicious site, the attacker site, actually had some code which uh, refreshed this page without even noting by the user. Now let me show you the code how. Uh, how how uh, I did that. So this is the victim. So this is, let's say this is the gmail.com page, and uh, it has a href where uh, target is set to blank, and it says click me here, and it's redirecting. Now this redirection could be a third party website, or this could be a within the same gmail domain. It could be anything. And uh, just so you know, this uh, vulnerability was. Uh, was valid or was uh, present in the Facebook, Instagram, and, and many other big sites until last year. Uh, here, there, there is like you know another way uh, you can see it. Like I did not demonstrate this, but yeah, you could also have like in the website you could also have like window dot open, which will open a new tab, and you have this. Of course, it doesn't set this, but that's the default value of it. Now let me uh, let's. 
go to the uh, attacker HTML because that's going to be uh, our main code. So here, of course, is why don't you go back to the previous tab, but then there is a script inside this uh, attacker page where it accesses the window opener location, so where this page was linked to, and then uh, it says, like, you know, it replaces the page with the attacker's own page, and which is this fish.html. Of course, we don't need to see this page. It's a simple HTML page. But this is this is how the, the property that it could access is window.opener and then change the location of the uh, page. So uh, let let me let's go back to our uh, presentation. So that that's the reverse tab mapping, right? Now, of course, uh, we show that this window dot opener is one of the uh, property that it could access. Now, let's say if it's a cross origin, right? Uh, so um, uh, Gmail is trying to uh, link, uh, let's say xyz dot com page or article then it could access uh, this properties. One of them is opener.close. This is returns a Boolean value indicating whether a window has been closed or not. This is frames return all the iframe elements in the current window. Then opener.length. This is returns the number of iframe elements in the current window. Opener.opener returns a reference to the window that created the window. Uh, opener.parent returns the parent window of the current window. And self return the current window and top returns the topmost browser window. So we just use the opener, but of course, uh, uh, an attacker you can use all of, um, any of this property and, and try to fish the site. Now let's assume it's the same domain. So same domains, what I meant is if the gmail.com is linking to a page within the gmail domain, then it has access to all the properties by exposed by the windows. GS object reference, so it has more access than this one. Now, as far as the risk rating goes, uh, as you would uh, have guessed by now, if it's a cross origin, the risk goes higher because you can't always trust the trust third party. So, if you are linking your site to xyz.com, right now xyz.com is might be trusted and, and most secure, but tomorrow it might get hacked and like you know took over by some attacker, and now they can your site is ha uh, f able to fish because of that, um, uh, like in xyz.com got hacked. So the risk is always high when you do that. And we'll also see how to mitigate it, but that, that's, a, that's how you go for the risk writing. If it's the same domain, of course, it's a bit trickier for someone to do it because it's an internal domain and you would trust all the resources that you hosted on your domain. So the risk is a bit lower, but it's still a risk and, uh, and we, we should still apply the mitigation there. So the mitigation is, oh, first thing is you set rel to no opener and set that value to null. So that means it does not allow window.opener property. Then for the older browser, uh, you can set the no referrer and that would also prevent like, you know, the parent page to be uh, changed by the attacker. So these are some uh, mitigation that I uh, I would highly recommend to apply. Again, uh, like you know, if it's a, if it's pointing to a third party, it's definitely something you want to fix. If it's the same domain, it's still a low risk sort of thing, but uh, you want to keep an eye on because if one of your internal resources nowadays, like you know, I, there are just so many resources hosted on a single domain that you and uh, minor minor gap hole in in one resource could lead uh, a huge vulnerability in the other application. So you want to apply this mitigation no matter uh, what uh, is it the same domain or the cross domain, but uh, that, that's what it is. So I wanted to just demonstrate to you guys uh, this this uh, particular uh, attack that I I, uh, I thought might be useful. And someone also asked, like, you know, other phishing attacks possibilities. So I thought, okay, let's do this. Let me know if you like it, please hit the thumbs up button. I'll have more details in the description. Uh, I'll link the OWASP page, which would describe some more information about this one. And uh, please subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, please leave comments here. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.